Adelia Barber. She's a longtime member of Whitney Grange. And uh, she's been a secretary right now, but she's held many positions in Whitney Grange, including master. And uh, this is a reception table. People come in, they give donations, or they give tags for their meals. And uh, half of the project is one of the big projects in Massachusetts State Grange. We've been uh, many years donating half a project. And it's really helped uh, people in small countries around the world. So we thank you for being here. This is Gail Till, she's uh, with the Heaven Project. They started in 1944 and they're an inclusive organization. We see the ads on TV that show uh, foreign countries like Britain and Africa and so on. But it also includes the United States in areas where they've been hard hit with drought or whatever. Part of involving the children of uh, the school, we had an art contest, we had a standardized picture, and we opened it up to the preschool, kindergarten, first and second, and these are, the winners are posted with this, but this is all our artwork. <laughs> it was quite creative, someone gave me black and white cows colored brown, uh, the colors are quite interesting. Then I had a school teacher, um, the judge that over here, have an essay contest. In fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, they were encouraged to write a, oh, yes, an article on what is agriculture or the importance of agriculture and they do fairly well on it. This is a map of the APR land that is saved in Whiteley. So all I say is farm land and never go back to building houses or other things. They've got brochures here and they've got the different map and shows where each uh, piece of land in the town of Whiteley is preserved forever for farm land. We're showing the film that FCAP produced. We're showing that all day long. People drop in, look at it, and then uh, it goes for 92 minutes. And we thank FCAP for the great job they did in producing this film. It's uh, been shown on uh, Channel 22 uh, five times this week and on Channel 12 about eight times this week. And we sure appreciate it. And we thank FCAP. Morris Farms has uh, loved to sample some of those very, uh, very they start. And, uh, they have just gone to uh, their place out in Washington State, and so they're out here today, but they sent an example of the different things that they uh, grow, the bushes, and they've got hundreds of acres all around, and uh, take hundreds and hundreds and thousands of very uh, strawberry bushes, plants, and uh, some all over the state and around the country. And it's the catalogs here, and uh, that's what we can bring your presentation that we'll send to them. This is John LaSalle from LaSalle Flores. He's a boss now. I used to be the boss for many years, but now my son is taking over. He brought some of the uh, different flowers and things. Maybe he'll explain it. Well, we're a full-service retail flower shop, but we also have greenhouses in which we grow cut flowers and annuals year-round. Uh, we've been in business since 1934, and uh, you know, this, this is getting to our busy season. Three seasons that come together with our retail shop, Mother's Day, we just had Easter. Uh, we've got graduations and proms coming up shortly too. We grow annuals and vegetable plants for people to plant in their gardens, and we grow cut flowers year round, so we're busy, busy, and we're getting ready to plant our outdoor, outdoor cut flowers. Hey, Ruth, the uh, Master of State Grain, a Master of Poitou Grain, a presentation for John. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, John. Now we come to the UMass Agricultural Learning Center, sponsored by the Massachusetts State Grange. The Grange was started in the 1800s when, after the Civil War, the uh, farms were destitute and Grange was started back in those days. That's why it was a farm organization. It's gotten a little bit away from the farm organization now, but there's still very much interest in farming. These are all a little display here of what they do. Uh, got a little something to say about it? 
Yes, um, the Agricultural Learning Center was started as a um, place for an outdoor lab for students in, to learn about agriculture. If we think about chemistry or physics, they have labs. In agriculture, we often don't have labs, so the Agricultural Learning Center, going back to the days of Levi Stockbridge said, we learn by doing. And so here they have the students can actually learn by practicing agriculture. And this field is a hay field and now we've turned it into a learning center for, um, for uh, agriculture. Well, thank you for being here representing the uh, state grange. Quite the grange does a lot with the uh, schools and our national and state granges do too. And, uh, Ruth and Master Whitey Green works a lot with the schools. Yeah. Maybe she'll tell you a little bit about the things that are going on here. Okay. I invented a vegetable seed lotto where the children have to match flowers and. That's a puzzle. It's huh? a puzzle. Right. One of the more unique things that we did was to grow a garden in a glove. And what you do is you write the seed name on each of the fingers of the glove. Then you take a cotton puff and you put it in each of the fingers and take a little bit of water and drop it in like that. And then you put your seed on cotton. Hang it in the window with scotch tape and you can see the grow, you can see the root structure and the plant appears. You cut the fingers off when you plant them? Yes, you can trim them off and just slide them off. The kids never got that far. Um, we offer the idea of making butter by putting X number of tablespoons in here and shaking it. This is heavy duty cream. This little thing here was in arts and craft for the kids today. We take a styrofoam ball, uh, for that, put some gloss on the top, stick an instant flour. And over on this side, these are fairy gardens where you have to put different layers of seeds and sand and soil. And chichia grasses in this, and this is a regular grass. And here is just a, a way of showing the kids how butterflies evolve. Yep. Then they have the, the, the honor of milking a cow. This is Jay and Jay Maple, uh, producers. They're in the center of Whitening, and uh, they produce maple syrup. And John, tell you a little about, a little about his products here. Well, pre presently, all we make is, is maple syrup. We haven't expanded into the sugar or the uh, cream operation. Uh, we have some samples out here. We uh, had a, a decent year. People were concerned this year whether we were going to actually have a good year or a bad year because we had no snow this winter. It made it easier for us. We didn't have to work on snowshoes. Uh, pretty much, we have some samples out here. And this, oh, this is an old, this is how they used to do it. Used to hang a bucket on a tree, and then every at the end of, when we got out of school at the end of the day, we go take the bucket, go over and collect it in the tanks. Not anymore. It's all done in pipeline now. But the lot bigger buckets in the old days. Oh yeah, it's a lot bigger buckets. That's why we have all have broad shoulders walk around like this, Jim. Well, thank you, John, and uh, Master Whitey Grange has a presentation uh, for you. Appreciate you thank coming you. here and being in our film. We will hang this up in the sugar house. This is Quanquat Farm and Orchard, and we sell a variety of fruit products. We have a pick your own orchard that sells blueberries, peaches, and apples in season, and we have a farm stand that's open from early July to mid October. We also do weddings and events in a restored 18th century barn, and we sell a variety of products that are not ripe yet, so they're not here today, <laughs> so we don't have fresh fruit today, right. but we also sell t-shirts and other items in our farm stand when it's open. So, uh, we are on a historic farm that used to be a dairy farm, so we even brought with us some of the trophies that our cows won back in the 1920s. When I was eight years old. 
the owner of them back in about 1936. Uh, they had a big auction, a conch one, auctioned off all the cattle. They sold certified milk, and it was all through oil, places like that, and they were real big. Yes, it was quite, it was quite, the, quite the big farm, and many of the barns and the houses still stand today, and we use them for other purposes today. But we're very proud of that, that heritage. So, Wesley, we have here the master of the uh, Hoity Grange, and uh, Janet from the State Grange is here. We have a little presentation to make to you. We appreciate you coming here and joining in our uh, farm day. Well, thank you. Brook Ledge Farm, yes. we thank you for coming here today. We're going to have you show us a little bit of what you sell and you know, what you do and uh, about your business. Well, I have the little of everything, anywhere from granulated sugar that we make, um, maple cream cones, uh, maple cream in the, the two maple cream maple candies. Other than you know, obviously uh, the maple syrup, um, also involved in um, supplying maple products that go into the maple tea. Um, so that's a little of everything that I have here to talk for today throughout the year. Oh, we thank you for coming. We have a little presentation to you from the master of Whitey Grain. We also have a representative here of the master's estate grain. I'm here. Thank you. Coming. And we thank you. Okay, thank you. It's a bear path farm. They do composting. They are a huge, huge farm out in West Whaley. They are like most of the farmers in town. They're working uh, 16 hours a day, seven days a week, and uh, weren't able to be here themselves. But they have a lot of their advertising here for you to look at. And they're going to get a little presentation too, even though they aren't here. They were featured on our film we had through FCAT and uh, we appreciate uh, them having a the table here. Thank you. This is Ewan Mikulajczyk. He has Ewan's apiary. He has beehives and uh, there's a lot of stuff with honey. He'll tell you a little bit about what his products is here. We have, we have some beeswax. And beeswax comes in different colors. This is a little bit of a, it's got a different color, kind of a greenish yellow. And we have beeswax that is a lot, a lot darker color. It depends on the flowers and the age of the wax that is on the cappings of the frames. Now, this is, uh, this is part of the frame, which the bees uh, extract out, and after they start to pack this in with honey and pollen of both sides, and when it's ready to be harvested, there's a layer of wax, and it's, it's skimmed off, and then it's ready to put into the extractor and spun out for production. And there's a nice dark, dark honey, which depends on the season and the type of flowers are out there. They come, uh, honey comes in different grades of uh, color. It can be dark, it can be very, very light amber, or almost clear. And, uh, I produce all these different types of candles. These are, Paper candles for the dining room set, the kitchen, what you want, all sorts of candle products here. Oh, okay. You can see. I thought it was less than that. We have some real light. This is a lighter black of wax. You can see the comparisons. So, how about you tell us a little bit about what beeswax is? Beeswax is actually beeswax is actually beeswax is actually honey. What they do is they they collect the honey and they uh, extract the moisture and the water content from the honey. And with their mouths, they excrete the uh, honey and they produce. The wax from that. And that's how you get beeswax. It takes it takes ten, let's see, ten pounds, ten pounds of honey to produce 
one pound of beeswax. So you can see how much work. Uh, I see you on, you got your twin brother over there. In the, uh, you're working. Uh, these are all the. This is the bee suit. Every beekeeper has to wear one. Chris is a smoker. In order to. When the bees are coming in and out, you put in. Uh, I put it. I like to use shavings. In there. It's easy to light. It's easy to get going. Then once you get it going, you just give it some puff of smoke, just like that. It calms the bees down, and uh, you can work with them. Because what happens is the bees will fill up on honey. They can't sting it. Okay. So this is part of the equipment that we use. A hive tool. When the frames are inside the box here, you have to use it. Morning. How are you? Try to lift the frame out of the box. And, uh, this here, this brush, is very soft. And if you're taking, let's say you're taking honey out of the box here, you're gonna have a lot of bees on here. What I, what I like doing is you take the frame and the bees come off pretty much. I went down to the bottom. And I take this brush here and I gently went like this. Bees are gone. And they fall right off. Good. And I just go like this. And the bees will fall or they'll fall here and they'll go back inside. So well, thank you everyone. We have a little presentation for you here. This is from the Hoity Grange and the uh, Mass State Grange and the uh, Massachusetts uh, Farm Commission. Okay, thank you for being here. All right. I don't know if you like it or not. Oh yeah. Well, this is a presentation from Smith Vocational School. We have in Franklin County, our Franklin County Vocational School, with quite a few of our students from the county. If they don't have the special program that uh, Franklin County Vocational, they get on a Smith School in Northampton. <laughs> Smith School has a little uh, brochure here and stuff. We appreciate them having them here, and uh, we enjoy having the students from the county going down to Smith Vocational School. Thank you. This is from the Full Moon Market Garden. They have huge, huge greenhouses over on Route 5 and in East Whateley. They grow organic uh, types of uh, vegetables all organics and they do a huge business around. We have a little presentation for them. Thank you for having an exhibit here. Yeah, well, I'm uh, Walter Thayer and uh, owner of the tractors and I've uh, totally restored that with the help of my son and my grandson and uh, we buy these. Uh, they're um, a little rusty but if they run well and they, uh, they have the uh, if I can look forward enough to see a good product in the far, on the far end of the project, I buy them and uh, I've restored them. And I have a collection of about eight, some are eight or nine, some are uh, a project that's already uh, underway and hope to finish them if I live long enough. My collection is mostly 1955s and they are in the international uh, um, from the international end of it, our McCormick end of it, they're all in the numbered series, not the letter series, series which was earlier, but these are number series tractors. We have the Grange, we'd like to give this certificate appreciation, and you notice that I have, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I fixed it with an IH sign on it and a little boy with a tractor. Okay, thank <laughs> this, you. This is my brother. Okay. Thank you very much. And our dad very, very used nice. to do milk this way. This is a milk can. Well, our background is a dairy farm, so we uh, have collected. And one of the companies that dad used to sell for is the Hood Can, which is one of these is uh, from the Hood Corporation. Yep. This has been international. Okay. 
but you can imagine filling these cans, what, 50 gallons? No, they're uh, uh, 40, 40 quart cans. I knew it was close to They're 40 quart cans. And you put them in a cooler. So you develop muscles at a young age. 